The NBA's bubble was an unprecedented environment with a historic showcase chock full of amazing highlights and incredible performances. This is for the win! But as they say, it's a make or miss league. So let's take a look at the leading scorers, the most efficient shooters, and the least efficient shooters in the bubble from every spot on the floor. It makes sense to start in the paint for a few reasons. First of all, paint shots are still the most important shots in the game. And second of all, nobody in the bubble was more prolific in the paint than LeBron James. That's right, the 2020 Finals MVP led his team to the title in part because once again, he was unstoppable at the rim. James poured in 188 paint field goals in the bubble, by far more than any other player, and he converted 68.1% of his shots there, by far above the league average. In other words, at 35 years old, James is still among the most prolific rim attackers on the planet. James drives, gets inside, running layup. It's good, and a foul! Even though Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks had a disappointing trip to Orlando, there were still some encouraging signs. Among them, the 2020 MVP was the most efficient volume scorer in the paint. Giannis is one of the game's most dominant forces, and he proved it by converting over 70% of his paint shots in the bubble. That's even better than LeBron. And his ability to convert at the rack will make him a force in this league for years to come. There comes the MVP to the basket. Nasty finish. But while Giannis was arguably the best finisher in the bubble, his most important teammate may have been the worst. Chris Middleton failed to convert his close Rangers in Orlando, hitting just 28 of 71 tries. That's just 39% which is not only below league average, but also a key reason why Milwaukee struggled to score in their disappointing series against the Heat. Middleton has got to get better near the rim. Let's move to the mid-range, which is a dying art form in the modern NBA. And while the mid-range baseline jumper is the most endangered shot species, one emerging superstar is still getting his buckets in these old school areas. Nikola Jokic was both the most prolific and the most efficient mid-range baseline shooter in the bubble. The Joker used his patented Sambor shuffle and his hyper-elevated release point to sink 25 out of 45 attempts in these areas. That's almost 56%. That turnaround jumper is a thing of beauty. On the flip side, even though Anthony Davis was terrific in his first title run, he struggled to make his mid-rangers, especially along the baselines. The brow sank just 36.4% of his 55 attempts in these areas. But something tells me he doesn't really care about that stat. The dude is now a champion. Just like Davis, Kemba Walker found himself deeper in the playoffs than ever before this season. And just like Jokic, Walker was clearly the best shooter in his favorite spot in the bubble. Thanks to his incredible handles and footwork, Walker was the best pull-up mid-range shooter in the bubble. Kemba can hit the brakes as well as anyone in the league and rise up for reliable elbow jumpers almost any time he wants. Not only was he the most prolific scorer in these areas around the free throw line, he was the most efficient volume shooter here too, sinking over 60% of 63 jumpers here in the bubble and often in high-pressure situations. Cardiac Kemba, that is a tough but Kemba-like shot right there. Russell Westbrook shot selection has always hurt his overall efficiency numbers, and his tendency to rise up for ill-advised jumpers was once again on full display in big moments in the bubble. Defense laying off of Westbrook, daring him to shoot the shot. Westbrook will shoot it, air ball. Look, there's no question that Westbrook is one of the most talented and tenacious guards in this league, but his tendency to take these bad shots is still frustrating fans deep into his prime. Let's move beyond the arc to the most en vogue shot in the modern NBA, the corner three-pointer, where P.J. Tucker has become one of the most successful specialists in the game. Not only has Tucker led the NBA in corner threes made in each of the last three seasons, the former Longhorn with the great shoes did it again in the bubble, sinking 33 corner threes in Orlando. He stands down there in the corner, 
and knocks it in if you help off of him. But while P.J. was the most prolific, he was not the most efficient in the corners. That honor goes to Jay Crowder, whose sharpshooting provided a huge boost for the Eastern Conference champions. Crowder is no stranger to playoff basketball, and his 3 and D performance in the bubble was exactly what Miami needed to make a run to the NBA Finals. This is the best I've ever seen Jay Crowder shoot. His three-point stroke has been terrific. Meanwhile, Danny Green missed more than his fair share from this spot. He wasn't terrible by any means, but by sinking just 33.8% of his 77 corner threes in Orlando, Green was the least efficient corner three shooter in the bubble. But just like the brow, something tells me this stat won't bother Green, who remains one of the best 3 and D guys in the game and has now won three titles with three different squads. Duncan Robinson was one of the breakout stars of the 2019-20 season for one simple reason. He's one of the best shooters in the world. Robinson was great all year, but in the bubble, he was especially dangerous on the wings. He made 46 of his 108 wing threes in Orlando, which made him the leading scorer from these key shooting zones. Robinson is special because he combines size with both elite accuracy and release speed. Robinson for three, bang! Duncan Robinson from downtown! There were so many great performances in Orlando, it's hard to remember them all, but who can forget Donovan Mitchell? This guy was on fire dueling with Jamal Murray in that epic first round series. Mitchell was ridiculously hot from the wings sinking 56% of his wing threes in the bubble. By far the best such mark in this area. Donovan Mitchell, a clutch three-pointer for the Jazz. Goran Dragic was a huge reason why. Miami got all the way to the finals, and he abused pick-and-roll defenses with Bam Adebayo throughout these playoffs. However, as a three-point shooter, he was actually kind of cold. Dragic hit just 25.9% of his 54 tries in these areas, which made him the least efficient volume shooter here. Let's finish up here at the top of the arc. It shouldn't surprise anyone that James Harden was the leading scorer in this area. The man Charles Barkley calls the dribbler lives up here, isolating defenders and launching more step backs than anyone else in the league by far. As a result, Harden led all scorers in the bubble by sinking 29 threes in his happy spot. It's ridiculous. Yeah. That is ridiculous. But while Harden made slightly more of these shots, Jamal Murray, another breakout star, made 27 of 57 tries here, converting a ridiculous 47.4% of his attempts. Murray is rapidly emerging as one of the most complete and terrifying backcourt scorers in the entire league. He can do it all, but his ability to take and make threes from here should get Nuggets fans especially excited. Murray, does he got another one in him? Oh, you bet he does! And that might be the dagger! Wow, wow! Even though Damian Lillard was incredible as he lifted Portland into the playoffs, he wasn't his usual self from the top of the arc. Get this, Lillard made just 18 of 65 shots up here. That's just 27.7% well below league averages and well beneath his elite standards. Lillard was the primary focus of every opponent's defensive game plan, and as a result, he was forced to take hard shots, and these numbers reflect that basic fact. Well, folks, there you have it. The bubble was an awesome accomplishment, and the Lakers, thanks to their king, are once again champions. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.